Rome fell, long distance trade stopped, craftspeople fled for their lives like everyone else. Skilled peasant farmers were no longer slaves, resuming farming where they could, competing with German migrants. Civil engineering skills were lost, including how to make cement, roads, and aqueducts. The standard view was that level of barbaric tech lasted a thousand years. That was not the case. Somehow, the people living then did not see themselves as, as illiterate dolts, incapable of progress despite patriarchs' assurances. The barbarism was still evidence then. People fleeing stress survival over progress. Most ancient world tech started again, minus long distance trade and advanced techniques. Metallurgy and the water wheel were examples of Roman era tech that took some time to return. Germans, meanwhile, added trousers, lace boots, a type of soap, and wooden barrels. The rise of Vikings and Muslims increased uncertainty and brutality. Despite that, trade returned, and with it, assimilating new technologies. Much of this came from China, including rigid padded horse collars, allowing horses to do the plowing in place of oxen. Horseshoes made horses more durable. Much of Europe edged toward feudalism, where elites could be knights, clerics, or monks. The lesser folks were craftspeople or serfs stuck to the land as farmers. Each manor was somewhat autonomous and made or adopted technological improvements. Farming became more intensive with improved irrigation, fertilizer, open field farming, and crop rotation. Knights fought from horseback and benefited from stirrups, spurs, the curb bit, and the development of armor beginning with chain mail sewn onto leather. Monasteries kept literacy alive. Being self-sufficient resulted in improved farming and farm products. The monk Dom Perignon invented champagne. China avoided the Dark Ages, but did suffer from revolts and overthrown empires. Key point, there was imperial sponsorship of new technology. A basic tool was the wheelbarrow. Early inventions included the abacus and sundial. The compass was developed into a navigation tool. Gunpowder traveled to Europe relatively late, followed by gun barrels by 1300. Edward III used cannon at Calais in 1346. Paper was a Chinese invention, making it to Europe in time for use on the printing press, with woodblock printing another Chinese invention. Mining returned to multiple spots in Europe, mainly using open pit mining. Mining for iron ore, copper, and coal gradually increased, as did mining methods, largely because of increased demand. As shafts and tunnels were used, water drainage systems developed, including the use of water wheels. Smelting required washing and roasting ore, breaking rocks into chunks for the reducing furnace. Furnaces expanded with chimneys of clay and sandstone. Improved bellows increased the temperature to smelt iron, resulting in cast iron. Iron was used for plowshares, harrows, and sickles. Blacksmiths made farm implements, nails, and horseshoes, becoming more specialized with growing demand. Gothic cathedrals, beginning with Saint-Denis in Paris under Abbot Suger in 1135 was the start. Pointed archers, rib vaulting, enormous stained glass windows, and flying buttresses under the direction of master masons. Bishops would be expected to build masterpieces in every diocese. 
Master Masons could read and write and had reasonable command of geometry and arithmetic, including using compasses and carpenter squares. They relied on experience, rules of thumb, and specialized expertise. They used sketches and both oral and written communications. Treadmills were used to raise stone and timber supports for arches and vaults. The workforce could be in the hundreds of masons, dozens of specialists, including smiths and carpenters, and thousands of laborers. Thanks to the Crusades, militant nobles had to build massive castles for protection against outside invaders as well as hostile vassals. Massive walls, a moat, gatehouse with portcullis, and drawbridge. Then engineers built battering rams, trebuchets, and once gunpowder migrated to Europe, sappers digging under walls to blow them up. Cannons existed eventually with increased effectiveness. Universities were medieval inventions as an expansion of cathedral and monastic schools, initially to teach theology, and then expanded to secular interests. The University of Bologna was founded in 1088, University of Paris in 1150, and Oxford in 1167. Creative scholars included Albertus Magnus, Roger Bacon, Thomas Aquinas, and Peter Abelard. The role of universities expanded, including adding many secular and professional specialties. Italy was expanding trade with Northern Europe and around the Mediterranean. They improved the management of textile manufacturing, mainly by controlling the procedures from wool processing through completed clothing, primarily done in homes. The loom for weaving and the spinning wheel were the most complex instruments. Venice and Genoa, in particular, expanded shipbuilding and navigation techniques. This included the building of larger ships, trained pilots, and developing maritime laws. Venice built large galleys using both oars, better rigging, and latine sails to increase maneuverability. New model cogs were built by the Genoese after 1300 with improved rigging and sails. Italian sailors also used better compasses, navigation charts, astrolabes, and hourglasses to gauge ship speed. Improved ships allowed them to sail 12 months of the year. Genoese and then Venetian ships sailed to the North Sea by the 13th century. The full rigged ship called the Carrick was developed by the 15th century, a rounded cog modified with a big spread of canvas using three masts with the main and foremast square rigged and the stern a lateen sail. The Carrick could haul a thousand tons of cargo. Columbus was a Genoese sailor. The Santa Maria was a small Carrick. The Nina and the Pinta were caravels. A Portuguese ship started about 1440 to sail down the west coast of Africa with a slim hull, mixed or latin rig, requiring a small crew. We'll hear more about Columbus later. Large trading companies developed credit mechanisms and the use of bills of exchange rather than moving large amounts of gold and silver coins. The use of credit in lending money developed into banking. Part of the trading process was developing double entry bookkeeping for improved commercial information that allowed bigger companies and long-term joint stock ventures. These companies shared risks with the advantage of better information and the use of professional agents at strategic points. Italians adopted Indian Arabic numerals, including the use of the zero. The water wheel, using flowing or falling water, was developed in the ancient world, but seldom used. 
they slowly became widespread in both towns and at manors for multiple purposes. Grist mills were the most common because milling grains into flour was profitable even on a small scale. Other purposes included wine presses, bellows for metallurgy, olive presses, hemp mills, and glassworks. William the Conqueror's Doomsday Book listed 5,624 water wheels in England in 1086. China had considerable expertise in mechanical clocks and other metal devices. Churches created large mechanical clocks to ring church bells for prayer services. One of the best known is the Salisbury Cathedral Clock, built in the 1380s, still operating using mainly original parts. The mechanical clock was improved in the 15th century by the invention of the mainspring, making clocks smaller, cheaper, and more accurate. As trade and prosperity returned, towns made multiple strides, including street paving and storm sewers in major cities like Paris. Plumbing and running water developed in monastic areas and expanded to prosperous cities. Timber was replaced by stone, more durable and less subject to fires. As cities prospered and trade grew, bridges were built. Paris built dozens of bridges across the Seine, increasing trade. Florence's Ponte Vecchio and London's conveniently called London Bridge were the most well-known. Key cities housing kings and bishops increased the public works responsibilities, improving water supplies and sanitation. Trade fairs developed at towns at strategic trade centers like Champagne, east of Paris. Engraving on copper plates used for printing images was the oldest form of printmaking started in Germany in the 1430s. The printing press is arguably the greatest invention of the period and Gutenberg gets most of the credit, but not financial success. Without enforceable patent laws, printers opened shops across Europe. Venice was the printing capital with 2,800 books by 1,500. Literacy became increasingly common and important. The first book published in London was Chaucer's Canterbury Tales. The publication of Shakespeare's first folio meant his plays would be preserved. China invented paper at the start of the Common Era. It was adopted by Muslims. Spain had paper mills using water wheels by 1300, and paper was reasonably widespread by the time of the printing press. Eyeglasses were invented in Italy by the 13th century after glassmakers perfected clear glass, then both convex and concave lenses. The concept of a compound microscope using an objective lens near an object with an eyepiece probably happened in the Netherlands about 1600 perhaps by Zacharias Janssen. A Dutch eyeglass maker applied for the first telescope in 1608. The first to build a telescope to look at the sky was Galileo, making discoveries about the moon and the moons of Jupiter running afoul of the Inquisition. A review of technology completes our discussion of the Middle Ages. Now we're on to the development of the Western world. Somehow, the puny and relatively unimportant countries of Western Europe came to claim world dominance. How could that possibly happen? Next time on Food History and Mystery. <laughs>